The northern Arapaho tribe has called the Wind River Indian Reservation their home since 1878. More than 150 years after they settled at Wind River, the northern Arapaho today have a rich cultural heritage. Language schools teach the Arapaho language to their youth as they maintain their traditions through their ceremonies, powwows, and strong families. I really believe that the extended families are a big component in, in tying our culture with who we are and learning who we are. You have not only your, your parents, but also you have your brothers and sisters, you have your aunts and uncles, you have your grandma and grandpas, you have all these different people who at different times kind of instill different things within you. Families are still traditional. They stick together. They help one another. Extended family in any community is very important. I mean, that's where you get your support. Passing down culture, passing down the language, passing down ways of life. I learned about the history, about our tribe, by my grandparents. They'd sit down with us and talk to us, tell us stories at night. I've heard about the yellow cap, sharp nose, and um, our leaders that we had before. We're all together, we're all integrated within somehow. Um, might not be a blood relation, but somehow within our community, we're all connected. I really believe that with our extended families, that helps us transmit those, those values down to each other. <laughs> it's really good to laugh, and laughter is, is something that I think, not just within the tribe here, but you find that among Native people all over the world. I get teased a lot. And within those teasings, though, there's always a lesson. This teasing is a, is a way, it's a traditional value of teaching. I'd like for the children of Wyoming to know that the Arapaho are, well, they're nice people. We're caring and sharing people. We're like a big, happy family. I make friends with everybody, you know. Everybody's my friend. I have no enemies at all. And that's the way we are, us people, you know, we're, we're like that. You treat us good and we'll treat you good. Show us respect and we'll show you respect back. We could be friends for, for life too. Humility is a really big, big value that has always been there within our tribe. To do things to help others, not necessarily for the praise, but because it's a part of their heart. The Arapaho transmit values such as humility, humor, and a positive outlook in spite of many obstacles. Well, when I was a little boy, my grandma, she had a tattoo on her arm. It had Samuel Yellow Dress on there. And I asked her about that. I said, that's your dad's, your dad's, um, in other words, you know, that, that's my husband. That was his name, Samuel Yellow Dress. I said, Yellow Dress? I said, yeah. She told me, he said, you guys' really last names is Yellow Dress. It's not Dresser. Yellow dress. I said, well, how, I mean, how come they changed their name that way? It's a long time ago. I said, the BIA, the government, lined up all these families and all that. You know, they all had Indian names or last names. So then he, they picked them like, well, you, you guys are gonna be Smiths. You guys are gonna be Browns, you guys, and all that, you know? So in, in my family, in that part, you guys are gonna be dressers. So our last name, dresser, is given given to us by the government. So my real last name is Yellow Dress. The Northern Arapaho tribe of Wyoming is culturally referred to as Plains Indians, but they are historically unique. We come from uh, various areas. But we came from like the Great Lakes before we migrated this way, became buffalo hunters. After negotiating the Treaty of 1851 with the U.S. government, the Arapaho and Cheyenne then shared land that included parts of Wyoming, Colorado, western Kansas, and Nebraska. The northern Arapahos were supposed to have gotten their own reservation in the Powder River region around the Bighorn Mountains. Never got it. They were seen as hostiles. The United States never offered them a reservation of their own, the Wind River Reservation. It becomes a home to the Arapahos who become guests of the reservation in 1878. When the Arapaho moved to the reservation, they were less than a thousand people. My grandmother, she used to talk about a yellow calf, sharp nose, and black cold. They were real powerful men. They were, a couple of them were medicine men and 
the people respected them. The evolution from chiefs and sub-chiefs to a council form of government um, was a process that took place over 30 to 40 years from the, say, starting in the early 1870s to maybe by the 1910s. This reservation was originally set aside for the Eastern Shoshone, but only because of the good heart of Chief Washke were we allowed to be here, and we've been here since. Since then, both tribes have mixed together. Wind River is now the third largest reservation in the U.S., with more than 2.2 million acres in Wyoming's Wind River Valley. Although there are no official reservation boundaries between the tribes, there are communities that are primarily northern Arapaho, such as Ethity and the community of Arapaho. I grew up on a reservation on a lower, lower Arapaho, that's what they called it, on the, the eastern part of the reservation. My grandma, she's the one that inspired me. She grew up the old way and all that. She raised me. That's where I learned everything from her. Traditional leadership has always been an important aspect to the Arapaho people. When the tribe has to make decisions, tribal elders are consulted. The elders guide the spiritual and sacred aspects of Arapaho life. Ceremonial people are the, uh, you know, they're part of the leadership, you know, a big part of the leadership of our tribe. It's important, you know, for the elders to be involved in all of the decision making. The traditions have been handed down to the elders, not necessarily taught in the books, you know, through the school system, but just through um, taking part in the ceremonies, through you know, oral stories, uh, songs. It takes probably a lifetime of, of teachings. When I was a uh, young man, well, I, I stayed with my grandmother. She's the one that raised me. We didn't live in the house, we lived in a tent. Elders, they would ask me to help them, you know, with their ceremonies. And that's, that's how I learned these ways. Today, there are people of many religious faiths living on the Wind River Indian Reservation. In the late 1800s, missionaries from the Catholic and Episcopal Church arrived and began churches, schools, and vocational programs. Today, Arapaho children on the reservation go to schools run by school boards, just like the rest of the state of Wyoming. Growing up on the reservation is really not that different from growing up in any other place. You go to school, you participate in sports, you do activities. I mean, a lot of that is the same. There's just a little different format. Um, we have our own language, we have our own ceremonies, things like that that are kind of brought into our modern lifestyle at the same time. The preservation of culture and the Arapaho language are both very important to the tribe. Our kids need to learn so they could hang on to who they are, knowing how to tend to hide, knowing that song. We, we have a number of our young people that are, we, we, we're teaching them. Our children are sacred and we have to teach them the right things, the right the history, because they are our future. They're the ones going to be leaders someday.